All right, this serves as a brief introduction for polar coordinates and polar functions. So first thing we want to look at is um, there are these three basic graphing equation systems. Uh, one is the Cartesian or rectangular system, and it's the one that we use all the time. You know, y equals f of x, and all the coordinates are, are described as x and f of x, an x and y location, and we use our function mode, of course, when graphing. Then we have parametric, which we've studied a lot uh, so far in this section, where both x and y are functions of t. And we can use parametric mode to find our graphs. Now we're going to look at polar functions, and polar coordinates are actually quite different in how they're defined. Um, while parametrics define coordinates on the rectangular grid, polar coordinates describe a distance at a given angle. And so this is quite different than what we're used to. So the pol polar coordinates are in r theta, and says that it's a distance r from an origin at an angle of theta, and you use polar mode. And so often, instead of our xy grid, a polar grid will look something more like this. And you'll have, um, yeah, you'll have uh, angles, and then you'll have a, a radial distance, one radius, two radius, a unit of one distance away, one meter, one foot, one unit, whatever it is, away at each instance. <clears throat> And so, uh, if we're going to start defining these sorts of things, <clears throat> we can look at we can compare rectangular coordinates with polar coordinates. So, the point two two, the x location is two, the y location is two. Um, if you were defining it with polar coordinates, uh, first you want to think of you know maybe you could think of there's a a right triangle here, um, and this right triangle, right? And so you can see how maybe vectors play into this a lot. Right? And here's your x and your y, and then this is your r. Okay? And that r, in this case, would be the hypotenuse, which would be, of course, 2 radical 2. And then pi over 4 would be the angle, pi over 4, of course, being the angle, because since both x and y are 2, it's a 45, 45, 90. They're equivalent, and so pi over 4 would be the angle. <clears throat> and so one thing that's interesting about polar coordinates is... There's, n there's not really a uniqueness of their coordination. Uh, you know, if you have the coordinate in rectangular of, uh, you know, x, y, and you have 2, 7, that's very different than negative 2, 7. And it's very different than 2, negative 7, and negative 2, negative 7. And, and any combination, really, there's no other... Um, coordinate in reduced form that's going to be the same location as this. But with polar coordinates, that's not necessarily the case. So if we look at this first one, 1, negative 2 pi. So I like to look at the angle first. So if the angle is negative 2 pi, really, if you think about it, that just means, you know, start here at 0 and then go negative 2 pi. So we're back here at 0. So really, that's the same as 0. And then we go 1. And so that's just one unit this way. And so that's the first point, okay? This is this is the first point here. Uh, and then let's change color and let's do the second point of 1, 0. But the angle is 0. So the angle is 0, right? So this is our angle. And we go 1 unit. And so that's also going to be right there. And let's change color again. And this one is going to be 1 and then 2 pi. And of course, if it's 2 pi, that means we go all the way around. So that's our 2 pi. And we go 1 unit. So that's also at that same spot. Um, and then... <clears throat> Again, if we look here at 1, 0, well, we've already done that one. That was just our orange one from before. So that's the same. And then negative 1 pi, this is an interesting one. So we go pi distance. So we go pi distance. So we're here. So we're facing this way. <clears throat> but our distance, our radius, is negative 1. So we are facing this way, but we go backwards 1. So we're here again. So that's what's going to happen when you have this, this negative radius. Essentially what happens is you face that direction of the angle, and then you go the other way, a negative distance. And so <clears throat> what you want to notice about all of those is all of them give the same Cartesian coordinate. They all give the same location on, the, on a graph, on a rectangular grid of 1, 0. And so any, any theta where you add 2 pi... 
<clears throat> is going to be the same angle as theta. And so terminal angles are going to represent different ways. And uh, because r is the directed distance, not just the distance, but directed distance, we can reverse the distance we travel if we reverse the direction. So uh, to um, put another way, you know, right here it says, I, I kind of like this terminology. Um, it says, put another way, taking one step forward is the same as turning around and stepping one step backward. And if you look here at this example, uh, if you say your angle is negative 3 pi over 4, but your radius is negative 2 radical 2, or if you say your angle is pi over 4 and your radius is 2 radical 2, you'll end up at the same spot and same location, and so they have the same point. <clears throat> now, one other thing to do is, you know, hey, how can we directly or very quickly get an x and y location if we're given an r and a theta for a polar coordinate? Uh, and so the way we could, a way we could very quickly do that is, of course, just build the right triangle that's making this using vectors. And so we can draw this vector here, and we can draw this vector here. Yeah, okay. And this, of course, is going to be our x. And this is, of course, going to be our y. And, of course, how do we find that x component? Well, we know that x would be r times the cosine of theta. And y would simply be r times the sine of theta. And these are equations that we will use consistently throughout the units using this vector concept. <clears throat> and so x is r times the cosine of theta, and y is r times the sine of theta. If we want to convert from polar to Cartesian, we can use this method. Um, and you're going to be doing this frequently, and you're going to be using these to substitute and even um, almost like getting rid of a parametric, uh, get to Cartesian coordinates. And so now, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I would like you to pause the video, and I'd like you to find the Cartesian coordinates for each of the coordinates below. So pause the video now, and try these below. See if you can get what they are, and then I'm going to show you the answers here in just a moment. Okay, so you've paused the video and now um, let's look at these answers. And if you look at these answers, you can see, uh, you know, again, you're just doing this x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. And so you got a lot of these radical twos and radical threes and things because, you know, a lot of times you're going to be asked things with um, trig functions and special rights and those sorts of questions when you're making this type of conversion. And then the next thing we're going to do is Cartesian to polar, and I'm going to save that for the next video.